Hi, it's Miss Parrot, and this video is about the null hypothesis. It's video number four in my AP Bio Equations Explained series. The null hypothesis is something that will follow you everywhere you go in AP Biology. I had never even heard of it until I was a junior in college. Up to now, most middle and high school science experiments test an experimental hypothesis. So in my example here, it's an animal behavior experiment to see whether fruit flies prefer apple slices or banana slices better. Typically, you would test an experimental hypothesis where you actually say what you think is going to happen. So maybe if banana slices have more sugar, fruit flies will prefer bananas over apples. That would be a typical experimental hypothesis. But in AP Biology, we test the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis, or H sub zero, is basically the statement that there is no difference or no effect, that there's no difference in whatever you're testing and that whatever we're observing is just due to random chance. So in this example, the null hypothesis would be that fruit flies have no preference between bananas or apples. It's a starting point, and we use the data that we collect to challenge that hypothesis. Now, it's important to remember that in science, we always work with a sample. What we study is just whatever is right in front of us. It's part of a greater whole. So if we are looking at different animals and their behavior, we're testing that small sample. There's always variation in populations, and then whatever data or information we get from this sample, we then use to make broader inferences for the greater population. Sample size matters, as you recall from the previous video on standard error of the mean. The larger your sample size, the more likely it is that the variation you're seeing is representative and a reflection of the whole population. Now. The null hypothesis is something that uh, it's kind of tricky, but it just takes practice. So we don't say that we accept the null hypothesis. So at the end, when you're making a conclusion, let's say your data shows that there are equal number of fr fruit flies on the apple side as the banana side. You can't say that you accept the null hypothesis. You can only say that you fail to reject the null hypothesis. It's kind of confusing, but you can only find, you can only fail to find enough evidence against it. Now, if this is blowing your mind and confusing you, just think of it like a courtroom. In court, uh, if somebody's been accused of a crime, they can either be found guilty or they can be found not guilty. They're never found innocent. So not guilty may seem like a double negative, but it's just because there's, it's not necessarily the person didn't do it, but there's not enough evidence to prove without a reasonable doubt that they did the crime. So they are not guilty and they get to go free. It's a similar situation here. Again, it just takes practice. Part of the practice is wording things carefully. So say at the end, um, your null hypothesis, like there's way more flies on the banana side than the apple side. So we would reject the null hypothesis. But you can't then say, it's official, fruit flies prefer bananas to apples, because you just tested a sample of all of the fruit flies in the whole wide world. So you can't just say, use broad sweeping conclusions. Something more accurate would be evidence or our data suggests that flies in this sample spent more time on bananas than on apples. The key takeaways from this video are what the null hypothesis is, H sub zero, that there is no difference or no effect in what you're testing, that it's data and statistical tests that will allow us to either reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, 
that we can never really prove it. Uh, we either have evidence for it or not enough evidence for it and that wording matters. It's important that we are precise and honest in our conclusions. If this video was helpful, give it a like, subscribe, share with your classmates, and comment below or ask a question about statistics or the null hypothesis. Coming up next week is the chi-square analysis where we will put the null hypothesis to the test. See you then.